Hi guys. We are doing section 12.4 on zeros of functions. And we've done a little bit involving um, zero um, when we worked with linear equations and we found intercepts. So we're going to look at an example um, where we find intercepts. And this is related to finding zeros of more complex functions. So I have 4x minus 5y equals 12. So remember when we found intercepts, first we would make x be 0 um, to find the y-intercept. And then we would let y be 0 to find the x-intercept. And then we could graph a line from that. That's all the information that we need because all we need to graph a line is two points. So I am going to put 0 in for x here, and I'm going to put 0 in for y here, and we're going to solve both of those. So that goes away. So here I need to divide both sides by negative 5. So y equals negative 12 fifths. So I have 0, negative 12 fifths is my y-intercept. And here that goes away, divide both sides by 4, and x uh, we have x equals 3. So 3, 0 is our x-intercept. So you'll have some problems where you're doing some intercepts, finding intercepts, and it's just like that, just like we've done before. Um, we can use those to graph, but they aren't going to ask you. Let me check. They are not asking you to graph these. So you're just finding the intercepts. So when we know the intercepts, we can graph. Okay. The other thing we're going to be looking at are um, parabola functions. So when you have a quadratic functions where you have this x squared, the x squared, that tells us when we have a function like that, that we are going to have a parabola. And so, like this is y equals x squared, or f of x equals x squared. Your, your parabola rests here at 0, 0. This is called the vertex, this point here. It's where your slope shifts from being negative um, to being zero to then being positive after that. So this parabola, um, the standard y squared function, um, the zeros, there's only one because it just is here. And then there are some parabolas that could be like floating up here or here, and they're not going to have any zeros because they're not going to cross the x-axis. So the zeros are where a parabola crosses the x-axis, like this. So we already know how to find them because we have done a lot of work with finding zeros um, with quadratic equations. So I make f of x be 0, and I want to find what x is to make that true. So all I need to do is factor, like we've done many, many, many times. Okay. So what do I multiply to get negative 8 that I add to get negative 2? So I'm going to try negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, and negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So this is what I need. So I have a minus 4 and a plus 2. Okay, because negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, and negative 4x and positive 2x is negative 2x. Okay, so now that I have that, my zeros, it's either x minus 4 equals 0, that's one of my zeros, remember, because that makes the whole thing 0, or if x plus 2 is 0, that makes the whole thing 0 when I multiply. So here, x is negative 2, and here, x is 4. So those are my zeros. That means that along the x-axis, those points are points on my graph. Okay, so like if, if I had a graph here, 
I don't know my vertex for this, so I can't graph it completely. However, I can graph that I have a zero here and I have a zero here. And if I knew the vertex, then I could graph my parabola because that's all I would need. Okay. So you have a section where you're just doing this. You're just finding the zeros. Okay. Step that we've done, we're just looking at an application of it and why we were learning it. Okay. And our last example is using zeros to graph a parabola. Um, so we should be using zeros and the vertex together to graph a parabola because you have to have both. So if I look here in the book, um, this shows some different values um, for x and um, f of x for my function. But here, if you look, these are my zeros where it crosses the x-axis, and this is my vertex. So if I know those three points, I can graph my parabola. That's all I need. Okay. And the key is that your vertex is halfway between your zeros. So you have to find your zeros first, and then find your um, vertex. And we'll, we'll look at how to do that. Also, this, this graph is, um, is negative at the beginning, so that's going to change something about the way it looks. So if you remember, I told you that the typical y equals x squared function, typical basic quadratic function, um, has a parabola like this. Okay, so now our x squared is negative, so we're going to see how that changes things. So first we're going to find our zeros, and so let's bring this negative Um, down here, negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. Okay, I don't want my x to be negative for the purpose of doing this next part. So remember that we can always multiply an entire equation by something. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. So negative 1 times 0 is still 0. That makes this positive. It makes this negative, And it makes this positive. So I haven't done anything wrong. I've just changed the way that it looks for the purpose of finding my zeros. So this is not the same function. However, it will have the same answers. Okay? I'll, um, I'll explain to you why when we get there. Okay, so... Those are my x's there, and I need to think, what do I um, multiply to get a positive 5? I only can multiply 1 times 5, and I have to add them to get a negative 6. So that means I need both of them to be negative. So they're both negative, this is positive, and negative 1 plus negative 5 is negative 6. Okay. Remember why I talked so, so much about learning how to do this? Because... You have to use it a lot, like a lot, a lot. Okay, so here my x, um, x would equal 1 for this one, because 1 minus 1 is 0. And for this one, x equals 5, because 5 minus 5 is 0. Okay, so hopefully this part has become pretty routine for you. All right, so I know my, I know my um, zeros are 1 and 1, 1 and 5. So I can graph those on my graph like that. And then now I'm in my parabola, or my parabola, sorry, the vertex of my parabola. The vertex is going to be right here in the middle. It's going to be somewhere on this line, this vertical line that goes right through x equals 3, because 3 is right in the middle of 1 and 5. So in order to find that, all I have to do is say, oh, okay, well, what is y, where, what is my function equal when x is 3? So I'm going to find f of 3, which we know how to do because we've practiced this. So I have negative 3 squared. Notice my parentheses. This is really important. Okay, really important. Negative 3 squared plus 6 
times 3 minus 5. Going back to my original equation to do this, okay? My original function. Okay, so f of 3 equals negative 9. That's negative because the 3 squared is negative. It's not inside the parentheses. Okay, plus 18 minus 5. So negative 9 and 18 is 9, and 9 minus 5 is 4. So that's my um, vertex. So 3, 4, that means that 3, 4 is the vertex. Okay, 3 being that middle x value, and then 4 being the output when we put 3 in for x. So now, if you look, this is my vertex and this is my zeros. My parabola goes like this. So I only need those three pieces of information and I'm able to graph it. Um, so maybe now if you look back, we talked about this being a negative and what that means. The negative just means that it's, it's reversed, it's flipped. Okay, so like if this were, so this is y equals x squared, this is y equals negative x squared. Okay, If this were positive, if this was y equals x squared, um, this one probably y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5, it would, it would be flipped. Okay, So if it were positive and otherwise the same, it would be, it would be like, oh, it would go down here to negative 4 and it would go through those same things, it would be flipped, okay, so like mirrored along um, the x-axis, okay. So your problems are just doing that, finding intercepts like we did here, okay, um, finding zeros but not graphing, and so for some of those, they're going to look different. They won't be quadratic functions like this. They might look different. And so, um, so your zeros, it might just be one value. It might just be um, like, I'm going to do a simple one here just so it isn't confusing. Let's say we have f of x equals 2x minus 3. The only zero I'm finding is when f of x equals 0. That's it. So I'm only finding the x-intercept. Okay. So when we see that word finding zeros, we're finding the x-intercepts. And it just so happens that on some functions, like this, you have more than one x-intercept, okay? Some of the functions are already factored for you, so that makes that a little bit easier. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to help you. Just remember when you're finding the zeros, you, you take whatever you're given and you set it equal to zero and you solve. In any of the ways that we've learned how to solve, so you might have to flip back and look at some of those ways that we solved those um, different kinds of functions. Okay, but we've done all of it. So it's all review. Um, and I don't think any of it is super complicated that they're asking you to do. Okay, so um, take your time at it. I will post um, or email you some answers at some point next week. And then all your other work for this week, the week of May 8th through is that right? 8, 9, 10, 11. 8 through, no, it's not 8 through 12. 4 through 8, May 4 through 8 that week. Um, all of your work is, is doing 12.4, doing the review for 12.4, and doing the review of um, function evaluation, the review of what we've done in this chapter so far, which um, you have all of your notes and videos for. Okay? I'll talk to you guys later. Do your best. Let me know if you have questions.